In this tutorial, we'll cover the derivative tools, which are located in the Derive suite of icons. There's the 2D shape, 2D wall, extrusion, point extrusion, and the 3D wall. They are called derivative tools because they derive a new object from existing objects or parts of objects. We'll begin by creating a simple object. Select the 2D rectangle tool and extrude the rectangle into a solid box. Now select the circle tool and draw on the top face of the box and push the circle through to subtract a cylindrical portion of the object. Now let's try the 2D shape derivative tool on this object. We can click on any face of the object and it derives a 2D surface from that face. If we undo that operation, you can see that we can click on any of the other faces and derive a 2D surface from any face on that object. We can also click on edges and the 2D shape tool will derive a line from that edge that we click on. We can also select multiple faces or segments by holding down the shift key and when we're done, release the shift key and click to produce a 2D shape, which is the line derived from the selected segments. And it's one single line. Undo that operation and let's hold the shift key down and select multiple faces. When we're done, release the shift key, click, and we have a surface that is a combination of all of those faces that we pre-selected as one single surface object. Undo that operation and you see that there's two options in the Tool Options palette. By default, it'll join them all together. Let's select the Each Selected Entity Separately option. So as we hold the Shift key down and pick multiple faces and click, you can see that a separate surface is derived for each of the pre-selected faces. Undo a few more times to go back to our original object. Now let's try the 2D Wall Derivative tool. With that tool active, I'll click on the top face and we can see that a 2D wall profile is generated that matches that top face. In the tool options we can change the justification to go to the left, to the center, or to the right of the boundary of that selected face. We can also type in values for the 2D wall width and we can also change these values graphically inside of the modeling window. And if we were to move this object you can see that the 2D wall is derived as a separate object. Undo that operation to go back to the original object again. Now let's look at the Extrusion Derivative tool. With this tool we can click on any face and extrude a new object from the boundary of that face. I can click on the top face and pull that up into a new object. And if I were to move these you can see that they are created as separate pieces. I'm going to create a slope surface by using the Move tool and holding down the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows and clicking on just that edge and dragging it. Now if I use the Extrusion tool on that surface, you can see that the default is perpendicular to that surface. In the Tool Options palette, I can change the option to be perpendicular to the reference plane. And now the Extrusion is deriving it perpendicular to the current plane. Undo the previous operations to get back to the original object. Let's see how the Point Extrude works. Well, you click on the face and it extrudes it, but it extrudes it to a single point. If I click on the top face, you can see I can extrude the entire face boundary to a common point. I can move that convergence point anywhere that I want by dragging these control handles. And I can also modify that extrusion height. And now the last derivative tool, that's the 3D wall tool. I'll change my view, look towards the top here and click right on that top face and you can see that a 3D wall is generated from the boundary of that face. In the tool options we have a few parameters that can be modified such as the left, center, or right justification of that wall. We also have the wall width and the wall height that can be changed numerically in the tool options or we can change those parameters graphically inside of the modeling window. In addition, since this is a separate object, we do have a separate set of controls for that newly generated object, so we can even change the overall shape of that derived wall. Let's conclude this video with just a brief sample of just one of the many ways that the derivative tools can be used in your projects. Here we have a number of 2D shapes that were drawn to represent the different rooms of a building. 
We'll use the Command A on Mac or the Control A on Windows to select all these shapes and then using the Boolean Union tool, we click a blank area and union all those shapes together. Then using the Extrusion tool, we can click on that shape and extrude it into a 3D solid slab for the floor. Let's put some walls around the perimeter of our floor. We can do that by using the 3D wall derivative tool. Click on that top face and extrude a wall around the boundary of that face. If you look in the tool options, we can change the justification to be left so the walls go inward from the boundary of the floor. Let's put a couple of doors and windows in here to simply choose any drawing tool, draw on any face of the object and punch it through to create an opening. When we're ready to start on the second floor, we need to derive a floor for the second floor. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our 3D extrusion derivative tool. And I need to click on the outline of the walls. So I zoom in close and hold the command key down and I can select just the outline of those walls and extrude a solid slab. Once again, let's use the 3D wall tool to um, derive a series of walls from the top face of that floor. And I'll leave the show controls visible for just a moment here so I can actually modify those walls and make a few adjustments to our wall. We can turn the show controls on for this object at any point. We can even save the file, call it up a week later, and turn the show controls on to still make modifications to that derived wall. Our last step is to put a ceiling on the top of that second floor. Let's look at a different method for deriving a slab from the top outline. We can do that by selecting the pick tool, moving the cursor on that top face, and then pressing and releasing the tab key and keep pressing and releasing it until it shows you the highlighted outline edge. Click and the edge is now highlighted. Now we go to the 3D Extrude tool. We click a blank area and the 3D Extrusion tool is used on the pre-selected outline. Select the Pick tool and click a blank area to deselect that outline. And that's how we can continually use the derivative tools to derive geometry from existing objects that are already in our scene. And this concludes the Banzai 3D Derivatives tutorial.